to talk today. Ever feel like you're not part of the conversation? That you're not getting the full picture on the important issues? Or the stories that impact your life? Jim, who was on in the last hour waiting a year for a heart operation, blew us out of the water. Well, at Talk TV, we cover the issues you care about. I would love to give the nurses a massive pay rise. Give them one, then. With proper debate and argument. We tell it how it really is. And have some fun along the way. Talk TV for the stories that matter. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV weather. Hello there. Well, the weather stays unsettled over the next few days, but it is fairly mild. Hopefully many of us avoiding a frost. And it's all down to these areas of low pressure, which just keep swinging their way in from the Atlantic, not only affecting Britain and Ireland, but also parts of uh, Western Europe as well. And by the time we get to the weekend, we could see a spell of very wet and windy weather, a bit of a storm on its way, as you can see by the tightness of those isobars. But certainly uh, starting off on Tuesday morning, chilly in the far north, but not so bad elsewhere. We have got a lot of cloud and rain over parts of Scotland. This will gradually work away eastwards through the course of the day. Could be quite a dry, bright start further south, but then we'll see showers bubbling up these heavy and thundery at times. And later in the day, we see this further rain working its way in from the southwest. Temperatures, though, into the low teens Celsius, a little chillier up over Scotland. And then as we look ahead to Wednesday, further heavy rain pushing its way northwards. It looks like a bit of a bleak day. Again, northern Scotland probably faring best early on in the day with a spot or two of sunshine. And later on, clearer conditions into the southwest, again with a few showers. Temperatures, though, 11, 12, 13 Celsius, a little cooler in the far north. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. Very good morning to you. It's coming up to two minutes past five o'clock. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of April, and this is your early breakfast show here on Talk, where we're on TV, on DAB, on your smart speaker, and we're live from the news building here in London with me, James Max. I'm with you till six this morning. So coming up, do you want a job? We've got an epic opportunity for you. You'll find out about the Star Wars memorabilia that's for sale. And would you pay £150 for tea? It might be in a grand location. We'll find out where. And the super rich list. Are you on it? <laughs> we'll also have your calls and you can review the papers as well. The Wheel of Misfortune is back, as are the ghastly paddles and the protective gloves. But this morning, uh, many of the front pages leading on this story. Three Britons have been killed in an, in an Israeli airstrike that struck an aid convoy travelling through Gaza. How does this incident change your view on Britain's support for Israel? So a very good morning to you. It's a bit of a grim set of front pages for you. Outcry at aid worker deaths, says the Times. Three Britons among the seven killed in uh, an Israeli airstrike. Uh, Rishi Sunak has told uh, Benjamin Netanyahu that Ga the Gaza toll is increasingly intolerable. A former Royal Marine was among three Britons killed in an Israeli airstrike that struck an aid convoy travelling through Gaza. James Henderson, 33, was a passenger in a marked vehicle uh, belonging to the charity World Central Kitchen when the attack happened on Monday night. Documents show that the former security officer from Cornwall had arrived in Gaza to work with the charity on March the 27th and was due to leave on Monday. Look, this is a tragic set of circumstances. We know that uh, Israel is looking into it. They've already uh, admitted as much that it was um, uh, an unintended incident. But what it does is it shines a light on the dangers of war, the difficulties of this particular um, 
uh, set of actions, but also it opens um, the door, I suppose, to conversations and discussions about whether or not or how Britain lends its support. We've already had calls, which I think are wrong, by the way, uh, that uh, indicate that, um, you know, this is this is not uh, necessarily something that we should be supporting and certainly arms uh, shouldn't necessarily be um, handed to uh, Israel if they're going to continue with the kinds of um, activities that they're undertaking. What I would do, however, I would step back from that and I would say the October the 7th atrocities are important. They are important to the extent that we mustn't walk away from Israel, that Hamas is a terrorist organisation. And when you have a look at what Hamas is saying and doing, it is unacceptable to walk away from an ally that we have supported and we must provide arms and we need to help Israel finish the job. That having been said, Israel must answer for its actions and also it must take responsibility for the things that it is doing. And as far as I'm concerned, we should have a full uh, investigation on this particular incident and we must seek reassurance that it will not happen again. However, I would say our support for Israel must continue. But I want to know from you whether or not you agree with that conclusion. Three Britons have now been killed in an Israeli airstrike that struck an aid convoy travelling through Gaza. How does this incident change your view on Britain's support for Israel? 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. I'd like you to give me a call. I'd like you to tell me. Uh, let me just read through the front pages to explain why it is uh, on the front pages of pretty much every single newspaper. Outcry at aid worker deaths. That's the front page of the Times. The Sun, SBS hero killed in Gaza airstrike. And they have a picture of uh, the what's happened. Special Forces hero among three Brits killed in the airstrike whilst delivering aid in Gaza yesterday. The Mirror, killed trying to feed starving kids, says uh, their front page. Admittedly, the star doesn't go with this story and it talks about um, spy fridges. Uh, the Guardian, charities halt Gaza aid after drone attack kills seven staff. UK demands answers after Israeli airstrike kills seven aid workers, says the I. Even the Daily Express goes with the story. Three Britons killed on Gaza mercy mission. The Daily Mail, uh, three UK forces veterans killed by Israeli strike. The Telegraph also has this story. PM demands answers after Israel airstrike kills Britons. Uh, that story also on the front page of the FT, aid victims. Uh, Israel admits tragic error. 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Give me a call. Have your say. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu admitted his country's military had killed the humanitarian workers in a tragic incident. It happens in wartime. He says we will do everything we can to ensure this isn't repeated. But I want to hear from you. Does this change Britain's stance? Does this change Britain's support? I say no. And I say no for good reason, that Israel is an ally, that Hamas remains a terrorist organisation. And this could have stopped the day after that terrible incident on October the 7th. Why or how? If Hamas had admitted and, and said that Israel exists as a nation and that we must engage, until or unless we have some kind of political solution, that agrees that Israel must and can exist, that uh, Jewish people must and can exist around the world, and that we have a, some kind of agreed settlement, then it's never going to move forward. If we have an organisation, Hamas, who doesn't uh, want to admit that Israel should exist and thinks that they should occupy uh, the territories, and if we have people talking about occupation and apartheid and all this sort of business, we're never going to receive and, and uh, find a solution to these terrible issues. Having said that, the way that this is being reported, the way that, of course, you show um, suffering children, you show starving people, inevitably uh, people's views on what's going on is going to be uh, changed and uh, influenced. And uh, looking at the suffering of the Palestinian people is horrendous. And it needs to end as soon as possible. Having said that, um, Britain's support for Israel should be there. Whether or not we uh, try and lobby Israel to change their strategy, 
is another matter. And maybe that's a route that you would like to take. 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Get involved in the conversation. Have your say. You can send me a text, 87222. Start your text with the word talk. You can X, tweet, whatever you want to call it, at the James Max at Talk TV. OK, let's go uh, to your calls now. Dave is curiously in Essex. Dave, good morning to you. Morning, James. Uh, good morning, Dave. So, uh, th this terrible incident is on the front page of all the papers. Three Britons involved in humanitarian aid being killed. Um, does this change our view on Britain's support for Israel, do you think? Well, it doesn't change my view, for a start. Keep and and what, what is your view, so that people my understand? My view is keep going until they're all gone. Hamas, let me explain it. A lot of people don't understand until it happens to them. If you've got a boil on your bum... Unless you get all that poison out, that boil will come back. And that, in one, is a mess. Got it? Straight. OK. But there are many who would say that uh, that's understandable. However, the death toll and the suffering is too much to bear. But that's down to a mess. They're using the women and children as human shields. They are, but then on the other hand, um, presumably you would like to see Israel provide a, a proper explanation as to what went wrong to ensure that this kind of um, misfiring never happens again. Well, whatever way you try to explain it, people live and die in war. Uh, the Americans are famous for it in Afghanistan, didn't they, didn't they shut a hospital? Do, to... do you think that because of the way that this is being reported, whether on social or digital media or indeed elsewhere that uh, the way that um, we see this war is very different from other wars because there's so much more information? Uh, probably right, yeah. Yeah, because they're showing every little bit and they're, they're nicotine picketing, obviously, against the Jews. You know, they're, they're, ta they're not taking the Jews' side, are they? It's pretty all Palestinian. Let's, let's, whatever way you look at the news, newspapers, whatever, it's all pro-Palestinian. Well, it's not all pro-Palestinian, but I understand that there is a significant pro-Palestinian movement. And I suppose there's a difference between supporting the Palestinian people and supporting uh, this view of uh, Palestine, the nation that doesn't exist, and where it should be. Well, I just find it strange about the Palestinian people. Egypt doesn't want the Palestinians there. Denmark had a survey, as now we're going to have a survey on the Crimes Committee, and uh, I believe the Palestinians come top of the list. Well, I think, you know, that's an, an interesting discussion that we could have, but we're going to have it on another day, David. So, pick a news... Actually, no, the wheel of misfortune is back, so I'm going to spin the wheel. Here it goes. I can sense your excitement. Look, look at that. No expense bad. Oh, you've received uh, just the Daily Telegraph. Right. Telegraph, page, let's go page five. Page five of the Telegraph, here it is. Uh, right, on the basis that the main story on page five, aid staff scrambled between exploding cars as they tried to escape the IDF barrage. Uh, this is the story about uh, how the um, vehicle was targeted. They then moved into another vehicle that was targeted, etc., etc., uh, which appeared in some of the Israeli press. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, Iran's supreme leader, has vowed to revenge after a suspected Israeli airstrike killed a top Iranian general in Tehran's embassy in Syria. At least seven people were killed in the strike on the Damascus, Damascus consulate, including General Mohammad Reza. As a Hardy, uh, a senior commander in the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps. Oh, what a terrible thing. Well, there we go. So that is in the papers today. A lot of discussion and a lot of international stuff there. Dave, thank you very much indeed for starting our conversation this morning. Three Britons killed in an Israeli airstrike uh, that struck an aid convoy travelling through Gaza. Now, uh, the Israelis have admitted that it's a tragic error. That having been said, how does this incident change your view on Britain's support for Israel? 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Abdullah is in Ilford. Abdullah, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Yeah, very good, thank you. So, um, how does this uh, incident change your view on whether Britain should continue its support of Israel? 
uh, we should never have been supporting in the first place. They've been killing um, aid workers. There's over 200 been killed even previous to this. 200 aid workers alone, let alone how many over 100 and something journalists have been killed. Do- many doctors, and nurses, uh, children, people people die in war. So, are you telling me that um, Britain should not have lent its support uh, to Israel after the October the seventh attacks? We should never have lent, lent Israel support after they started killing people in Gaza well before this. Is, is, is Gaza have had many 7th of October. So, so sorry, what, what should we have done about the fact that uh, Hamas was sending rockets into Israel on a repeated basis? Uh, then what we should have done, we should have listened to Ed Miliband in 2014 when he stated that we should have got the two-state solution. Um, we, should have, we should have pushed yes, for the two-state Hamas, solution. Hamas, then, doesn't, then. Hamas doesn't want a two-state solution. Hamas doesn't recognise. Hamas does not recognise that Israel exists. No, they've they've they've, they've amended their chart. If you look, if you read, no, it, they haven't. They they, they, they they do not believe that Israel should exist. Uh, they've no, amended the thing, their charter to the extent that they no longer state publicly that there should be a um, um, uh, a removal of all Jews. No, but that's not going to happen, James. The thing is, look, being realistic, look, every every everyone has a right to exist. To live, to live in peace. That's the point. Whoever's with between the river and the sea, that what, that's what it means. Everybody within that region should have a right to exist is, and to live a normal well, life. You, you, of course, but the thing is that if some people say that uh, a nation should be destructed and uh, they won't engage, that's uh, that's a difficult starting point, isn't it? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, James, you know, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. What we say, look, what we say and what is happening, and realistically what is happening today is uh, Israel is doing exactly that. They're, 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 even in the West Bank, they killed over nearly 600 people. They're di- dissecting the West Bank again and again with illegal settlements. In the Gaza Strip, they're, they're massive. You, you say that, you say people. that, but you're, you're not talking about the other side. Um, if there was no resistance from Hamas then we wouldn't see the uh, significant death toll that we're seeing at the moment because Hamas is putting uh, I- individuals who are innocent in the way of uh, what's going on deliberately. Hamas is still fighting and using rockets. Uh, Hamas has taken international aid money and built tunnels and um, uh, bought munitions. Uh, Hamas is being supported by various different nations uh, elsewhere to supply them with arms. You can't have a fight without two sides, can you? No, of course you're not. But the thing is, so, when, so when why I'm... why do you direct all of your concern at Israel when this clearly is a t- at the very uh, at the very best or worst, if you like, it is a two sided argu- uh, argument and fight that there wouldn't be uh, a war, there wouldn't be death and destruction if there wasn't a fighting force that is trying to repel Israel and what they're doing. There wouldn't be death and destruction, James, if. Our land was, our homes were being not taken over. Our land was not being taken over. Our land. Being impre- I'm talking about if we, if, if our Russia land. Invaded, what's it got to do with you? What's it got? What's it got? To, what, well, what's Israel got to do with you? Look well, it hasn't. Way. I'm not saying that it's my land or or, yes, or exactly. my people. Yeah, but the point is, I'm, I'm talking about if if we were invaded, if, if Russia took over the UK and the same situation. Occurred if October here, the seventh had happened on our shores, we would use every. Uh, ounce of our military to eradicate whoever perpetrated such an appalling set of acts would we not if 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 if, if, were, if that if happened we attacked, if we were attacked by 2008 when israel took out 1400 people in the gaza strip yes right, they didn't then, attack would we, would we they, they didn't that? attack because they were unprovoked Abdullah. so I, i'm sorry you're just talking a nonsense you're taking a view which is so myopic that it demonstrates a complete and utter lack of understanding as to what's happened in the region, a complete and under, 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 misunderstanding as to why it is that Israel has reacted in the way that it does, and a total um, one-sided view as to what the outcome should be. The thing is, look, James, if, if, we, if we had pushed for a two-state solution properly, we keep on saying illegal... Hamas but we don't, do anything don't want it. Don't, don't say Hamas don't want it. The so thing is, if Hamas been, had... doesn't want it, and if, for example, every time a two-state solution has been pushed and almost agreed, when the Palestinian uh, Authority tried to push that, Hamas uh, disagreed with it, um, infiltrated the organisations, overthrew the Palestinian uh, Authority who were negotiating on that front. And indeed, why did October the 7th happen? There are people who are far better informed than I am on this, 
and they were very clear and they said it's because Israel was about to do a deal with Saudi Arabia that would have uh, strengthened the position, guaranteed Israel's future and Hamas didn't want that either. They wanted to disrupt and destabilise the region and they perpetrated well, the attack on October the 7th in order to do that and they've achieved it in spades, Abdullah. Until or unless you recognise what Hamas stands for, you're never going to have a true understanding of the region. But until and until, uh, unless you understand what Israel stands for, the mass, how many people have what been killed? Since what, does how many innocent, what does Israel how stand for? What does Israel stand for? How many innocent people have been killed since the 7th of October, James? That, that is irrelevant to this particular well, conversation. So, so, I so don't want to see is, any innocent people killed. So that you, but if you've got you a fighting force that puts people in harm's way, that they use uh, munitions and they continue to attack... It, you know, this thing would have been over very quickly if Hamas had said Israel uh, exists and we must have a negotiated solution, but they won't. But the thing is, James, you say what you said just now that I said that how many people have been killed? You said that's irrelevant. Are those people irrelevant? Is that what you're saying? All the people that have been killed are irrelevant. Of course, any innocent deaths are not irrelevant. However, if, as I go back to my original point, if that attack, October the 7th, had happened on the shores here in the UK, would you expect the UK government just to sit and let it happen? So that's what I'm saying. Under the same principle, James, do you... No, do you, do you answer expect, the question. Answer the question. What, answer, what, OK, answer, answer, answer the question. question. No. What would no, you, you expect the British government to do in response to that? Exactly, that's what I'm trying to explain to you, that if... if Israel have, has and has indeed attacked Gaza many, many times before. They've had 7th of October. Why have they attacked before. Gaza so many times before? 7th of October was a Why have they attacked the Gaza? Things. Sorry? Why have they attacked Gaza in the past? Well, they, they state because of the rockets, but the thing is, how many people have been killed in Israel because of the rockets? You That's me? not the point. If you have a country, if we had rockets arriving on our shore, would you expect our government to do nothing? But we have do, have we taken answer the question? How have, have we taken answer the question? Yours? No, stop, stop, stop gish galloping. The thing is, look, have we have we taken over people's land? Have we expelled them? Have we killed their? Have we killed thousands of? Have we taken over the land? Have we do we build illegal settlements? In I think country? you should no, answer the question. I also think Abdullah, you should tell me whether or not Abdullah is your real name. Well, is James your real name? Yes, it is. <laughs> Because That's you've called point. before and you call yourselves different names, don't you? My name is what my name is, but the thing is, that's, that's irrelevant. The point is... Why you call you me with different names so you can get on the air, don't you? Because you perpetrate this view. You won't look at it the other side. You seem to be absolutely um, committed that Israel shouldn't exist and uh, that you, you're driving this narrative and you won't answer any questions that I put to you. So I would say what? you're a fake and a fraud. It's, it's, so, James, you need to, seriously, right? You need to look at the real picture. Innocent people, innocent babies are being killed. Yeah, why are they being killed? being killed? Why? Why? Because IDF is they're, they're, they're the, the most immoral. Uh, um, I, I, I got, I'm like Nico Pellet, the son of us uh, on the Israeli. And it's, not, and it's nothing to do with Hamas putting them in harm's way, is it? So, you're saying that um, uh, Olivia Pratt Corbell, the little nine. No, it's got girl, nothing to do with that. That's a stupid argument. That's not a stupid argument. It's They're a stupid you argument. Are you telling me? So you, are you telling me that if if you're if you're if you're it's a stupid argument. You refuse to answer any of my questions, Abdullah, or is it Khalid from Leicester? Uh, I think you should stop being a fraud and maybe answer some of the questions and look at yourself as to why uh, the narrative that you push and perpetrate. Of course, I don't want to see any innocents killed. Of course, I don't want to see any further action in uh, the region. I don't want to see it destabilised, and I don't want to see uh, poor innocent people suffer. But on the other hand, I do want to see Britain be far clearer with its support and make sure that Israel, yes, when they have done wrong, fess up to it and make sure it never happens again. Innocent people should not be dying. Having said that, until or unless we have a better understanding as to Hamas and can't even on our national broadcast to put them forward as a terrorist organisation, we've got a problem. Anyway, that's my view, but I want to hear yours. Uh, you've heard from Abdullah, or is it Khalid? Um, he d clearly doesn't think that uh, Britain should be supporting Israel, but I do, but with qualification. 0344 499 1000. That's the telephone number. Give me a call. Have your say here on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaker. 
Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what <laughs> just happened. <laughs> Whoa, miss it. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 what did fail her. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five twenty-six is the time. Very good morning. Yes, the home of common sense. And talking about uh, the story that's on the front page of many of your newspapers this morning: three Britons have been killed in an, in an Israeli airstrike that struck an aid convoy travelling through Gaza. How does this incident change your view on Britain's support for? Israel. 0344 499 1000. Uh, quite a feisty conversation, I think you'll agree, uh, with um, is it Khalid? Is it um, I, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> Abdullah, whatever he wants to call himself today. Um, uh, uh, however, it has provoked quite a reaction on the socials, which I'll bring you in a moment. Uh, meanwhile, just some breaking news uh, for you whilst we're on air. There's been a powerful 7.4 magnitude earthquake just off the eastern coast of Taiwan. I dare say we'll be hearing more about this story during the course of the day. The earthquake hit at 7.58 local time on Wednesday, which is about... Uh, uh, midnight last night and the epicenter situated about 11 miles south of Hualien. Uh, Taiwan's strongest earthquake in 25 years, multiple aftershocks and there have been uh, casualties uh, and some um, uh, some deaths as well. So we'll be keeping you up to date on that. Uh, four people have died, they said so far uh, have been counted, 50 injured according to the Reuters news agency. So there we go, that's happening there. Uh, meanwhile, um, this one says, take James Mouthy Max off air. Ofcom should do something about him. Sorry, I've just got a view. Is that not allowed? Uh, do we not live in a country with free speech? And how do you think I should deal with somebody who has multiple identities and calls in with the same narrative and doesn't answer a question? It's a conversation, isn't it?
Uh, meanwhile, uh, this one says, James, it's blatantly obvious that uh, Abdullah is a Hamas supporter, so why are you, as a Jew, giving him airtime to spout this rubbish? Shame on you, says Dino. Well, Dino, it's important to hear both sides, otherwise we don't get anywhere. Um, anyway, if you want to get involved in the conversation, you may do so. Darren is in uh, Kempston. Darren. No, Darren isn't. Uh, he's just hung up. All right, let's go to Thomas, who thinks, and we'll see if we can get uh, Darren back. Thomas is in Lincoln. Thomas, good morning. Good morning, James. You well? Very well, thank you, Thomas. Uh, so, what do you make of this? How does the incident uh, of this tragic error, which Israel uh, admits, uh, of these three um, British aid workers out of seven being killed in this uh, Israeli airstrike, how does it change your support for Israel? Well, really, first of all, I want to put my condolences to the victim's family of this, you know, this, this accident. But second of all, I think it's very important that they have a full investigation how they made such a bad cock-up of it. Well, that's one way of putting it. Um, yeah, I mean, as uh, an ally of Israel, I'm assuming that we should be putting all pressure on the Israeli government to give a very clear narrative as to what happened and arguably what went wrong, but then also to ensure that something, something like this, aid workers should never be caught up in anything like this. No, because they can't deny it happened because the van was clearly marked. It wasn't like a naked vehicle. So you know, the no. Story, well, story. They, they've admitted. I mean, they've said that it's um, they've, they've said that it's a tragic, tragic incident. Uh, it happens in wartime. We will do everything we can to ensure this isn't repeated. Mistakes are made in war. We know that. Uh, but also, what I find so extraordinary is that so many countries find it very difficult to um, uh, identify Hamas as a terrorist organisation, and then also to provide the support that Israel needs in order to get this done and finished with. We should, as this court, England shouldn't take the foot off the gas in helping Israel because we should keep pushing and pushing until it's stopped. All the terrorists, Hamas, ISIS, whoever, are gone because we can't have them coming back again. And, and I suppose, important. and that's, that's part of the problem, isn't it? Which is, until or unless Hamas is defeated, um, we're going to have an issue here because Hamas doesn't want to admit that Israel exists or should exist as a country. Uh, they, I mean, the problem with war, and this is the conversation indeed that I was having on primetime last night, the problem uh, with a war like this is that a whole next or of, of future generation uh, has been fueled up and... Um, um, motivated by what's going on now, which means that the, the problems proliferate for another generation. Because, I mean, what I find really of really strange and get my head around is people like Abdullah and that. Oh, well, what, what, what happened was on October the 7th, Palestinians, Hamas, sorry, Hamas, kicked the fence down, went into people's houses, kidnapped them dragged them over the border and took them under the ground. I mean, And I think part I mean, of the problem is that because we don't have all the evidence uh, of that October the 7th attack in the same graphic detail that we have of the terrible plight of Palestinian people today and the uh, incidents which are taking place, of course, public opinion is going to be skewed. Yeah, but from, from my point of view, Jewish, it just seems it, it's a little bit one-sided. That all, all the, I mean, yeah, but civilians are dying. Loads of civilians are dying either side, but you can't keep, you know, like people have done and all that. Like you can't keep going that Israel are baby killers because they're not. No, well, I think. I think that that's part of the issue here, is that uh, war is an ugly thing, and, and in order to achieve those aims, um, sadly, innocents do get caught up in it. I mean, if you have a look at the total population uh, of um, uh, the, the Gaza Strip, 2 million, and you look at the casualties, of course, it's a, it's a big number because any unnecessary death is too many, but on the other hand, it's a small number in comparison to the, um, the population. If Israel was looking to uh, eradicate the population, I'm sure there are other ways that they could or would do that, and that's not what they're seeking to do. They're seeking to root out Hamas and, and um, you know, to, to take them out as a, as a fighting force. Which but when it when it comes to Britain's support, what level of support do you think we should give? Do you think we should continue continue to give the strong support that we've given to Israel? Yeah, of course we should, but we should be more sort of involved in like the um, like the drones and all that, so there's no mistakes anymore. Well, let's let's hope that's the case. But then on the other hand, you've got people like Jeremy Corbyn who are calling for uh, an arms embargo against Israel. What should we do about that? 
give him a good slap round the head. <laughs> right. Well, that's one way of uh, that's one way of dealing with it. Oh, right. The wheel nice. of misfortune is spinning, Thomas. So we're going to pick Not a right. newspaper for you. I can sense your excitement. And oh, not again. We've got the Daily Telegraph again. No. You, you pick one that you want to read. No, no, the, the Wheel of Misfortune is here, so it's picked It's picked the Telegraph. So, uh, a number between 1 and 28, please. Uh, can I have two little dogs, please? 22. Oh, that's, that's going to be an interesting selection of numbers. Uh, I wasn't going to say no. No, no, no. It is an interesting selection of numbers. You've gone for the markets. Oh, great. Well, that's your own silly fault. Pick another number. Seven! Seven! There we go. All right. Here it is. Um, oh! Oh! Sad news. The, right. the small tortoiseshell butterfly population in England has fallen to its lowest level since records began. Figures published today by the UK Butterfly Monitoring Scheme show their number has fallen by 82% since 1976. The figures also showed that small pearl-bordered uh, fritillaries uh, declined by 71% in that period. I mean, that means they can't build anything on green stars now because then butterflies are there now. Yeah, probably. The protected, protected species. Meanwhile, um, Thomas, do you have a job? Yes, volunteer. No, not a job, but I do volunteering. All oh, right. Would you would you like a job? Because I've got one for you. Go on then. Let's have a look. Uh, this is in. Oh, hang on a second. I've just got to put the gloves on because uh, this is actually uh, in uh, the Guardian. And as you know, um, it's a toxic rag, and I need to protect myself against such toxicity. You want to get, get them uh, litter pickers? No, no, no. I've got, I've got a better job for you. Uh, a Cheshire village uh, that's been swamped by young visitors has appealed for tour guides with a very specific skill set. Can you guess what the skill set is? No. An expert knowledge of Harry Styles. More than 5,000 fans, known as Harry's, have descended on the quaint community of Holmes Chapel in the last year uh, in a pop pilgrimage to the singer's hometown. Some are said to be risking life and limb to visit the site of uh, Harry Styles' first kiss, a railway viaduct near a notoriously busy main road, prompting villagers to publish a self-guided tour map last year. It's, it, there's no need for that, is there, really? Well, aren't you a Harry Styles fan? Oh, no, he dresses like an old man. Harry Styles? Yeah, have, you, cards, have you seen the outfit that he wore at last year's Grammys Awards? I wouldn't expect an old person to be wearing what looks like a, a, a shredded uh, roll of tin foil. It's you know, very you, modern. You, you anyway. haven't seen the people by my, my estate, that's why. Oh, right, well then, they, there you go. Uh, a, a vision of uh, wonderfulness, I'm sure. Thomas and Lincoln, thank you uh, for your call. Let's go to Oliver, who's in Birmingham. Oliver, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Oliver. So, um, how does the incident in uh, Gaza, the tragic incident of the uh, airstrike which has killed three Britons and seven aid workers, how does it change your view on Britain's support for Israel? I mean, it doesn't change my view. I mean, obviously, condolences to, to all the families that have been affected. Obviously, you know, they're, they're out there doing, you know, do, doing their best to yes. you know, try and help innocent people. Obviously, we're losing innocent people, which, you know, no-one wants that on either side but yeah going back to what you were saying on october the 7th you know if, if we was having missiles landing on our shores um yeah i'd expect the government to defend themselves and, and, and i find it i find it extraordinary that people will not look through the prism of how we would respond if we go back to the terror attacks in um on 9 11 and then we look at the 7-7 attacks here in the uk and how we responded as a nation to that um, and the lengths to which we went to root out those who had perpetrated those attacks. And I still don't think that we completed the job, frankly. We still have uh, issues with that organisation. But if our shores were attacked in the way that Israel has been attacked, um, and, and I think we need a better understanding as to what Hamas stands for and who they're backed by. Oh, that, I'm not, I mean, that, I mean I'm, I'm more of an agnostic. I, I'm, I'm open to the concept of religion. I'm not convinced by it. But I think any religion that incites hate... Um, you know, if you're not one of us, then, you know, you deserve to die, sorry. 
Um, but yeah, I've got no. But but Hamas no Hamas is a terrorist organisation, and they have that view. But it's not because uh, it, it shouldn't be because of their religion. There are plenty of people of different religious faiths and and, and beliefs who seem to be able to get on perfectly well together uh, oh, yeah. because they respect the fact that other people have different religions or no religion, and, and uh, it should be a live and let live, and that's what we should have. I mean, no, nobody deserves to die down to down to their beliefs or or, or, or lack of belief. Um, as long as they're a good person, they believe in karma, they don't treat anybody how they wouldn't want to be treated themselves. Um, I mean, it's like one thing that's annoying me lately is the, the amount of uh, Palestinian flags that I'm seeing you know, flying around the UK. Um, you but, know, then, but then there are a lot of people who would say, Yes, but sometimes we do flag other flags uh, in support or otherwise. Uh, and whilst I, I agree with you, I, I find it deeply concerning that we have that level of, of flag flying, particularly of that flag or indeed of ISIS flags or other things. Um, there are a lot of Ukraine flags flying around the Britain, uh, which I would fully support. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, flying a flag is, is you know, it's... It, well, it's just patriotism, but I think it depends on the reasons behind you flying that flag and, yeah. and, and how how extreme your beliefs are. I mean, at the end of the day, Israel are one of our allies, um, and they're a good ally to have. But there are a lot of people in this country who don't believe that Israel should be an ally and don't believe that we should be supporting them. Well, then, should not be in front of you to deport them. Um, I, I, well, I, I don't, I don't, even for me, that's a bit harsh, Oliver. However, you've said it. Uh, let's no, let's no, move no, on no, to no. the uh, let's <laughs> just for time reasons. Let's move on to the wheel of misfortune uh, because uh, we we are up against it. Time. Oh, you have got the Daily Express. Are you excited? Oh, why not? Okay, uh, a number between yeah, one and sixty, please. So can you repeat that again? A one, a number between one and sixty. Go on, I'll have number seven. Of course you will. Why, what is about seven that everybody gets so excited about? Um, now, Rwanda will break gangs. Prime Minister is confident that he can stop the small boats. Rishi Sunak remains confident he can stop the boats despite record arrivals so far this year. Another 800 uh, illegal migrants landed over the Easter weekend after making the dangerous channel crossing. It takes the total number so far this year to 5,435, a 43% increase compared to the same time last year. I, I genuinely don't understand what planet uh, Mr Sunak and indeed others are. Uh, we'll hear from him later because uh, he's going to be on this station at 8 o'clock, never mind the ballots, with... Uh, you're and my friend Harry Cole, the uh, political editor of The Sun. Um, I just genuinely don't understand what the government are doing with this. No, no, I completely agree with you. I mean, um, the, what, 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 what's, what's in my me the most as well with, with that? Is, oh, yeah, I think we should adopt, adopt again, similar to the board. I mean, I think it was a, the, the Polish president made a mm. oh. comment on the, same, on, the same, on the same topic, and, and when he was asked, his, his reply was, our people don't want it. Our people don't need it. No, um, and I think a lot of people in the UK uh, have got the same views. Uh, I think they do. But let me ask you this question: If you are a young asylum seeker and you're in Wales, how much money do you think you can be paid in a year? Yeah. £19,200. Young asylum seekers are eligible for a £1,600 a month under a under nonsensical system, uh, which is in Labour-run Wales. Ministers confirmed the payments will be made under a £28 million basic income pilot. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is according to uh, various different uh, leaders over there. I find it astonishing that uh, anybody thinks that that level of money and support should be provided to anybody who just arrives on our shore illegally. It's disgusting from, 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 from from myself, poor of you, because yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sad personally. I'm I'm, I'm a single dad. Um, I live with my ten year old daughter. Um, I work, um, and and yeah, I'm struggling. It's it's definitely everyone cost of living is affecting everybody at the moment. But no, it has, Oliver, and I I genuinely don't understand why. People who, who are born in this country, live in this country and either need help or assistance or support, uh, that that support and assistance seems not to be there, and, whether it's through the health service yeah. or directly, and yet you can arrive the on the shores no illegally and be handed out this money. But they don't know their history, they don't even know their age or IDs valid, but they're putting them in four-star hotels, they're committing crimes, um, and then some people in, uh, in the UK... Um, seems to be kicking off that this new thing about um, vetting or uh, doing profiling to double check that you know the, what's coming into our country, you know the, the crimes, what what their histories, what their crimes are. And, and and I think that is the issue, Oliver. We must leave it there. But thank you for that. Uh, now, how does the incident in Gaza? 
of uh, three Britons, part of seven people killed in an Israeli airstrike that uh, the Israelis have admitted is a mistake. But how does that incident change your view on Britain's support for Israel? 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. We take more of your calls next. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <it's here. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five forty-six is the time. It's me, James Max, with you till six o'clock when it's Talk Today here on Talk TV. Now, um, all sorts of things uh, that we're discussing. Three Britons have been killed in an Israeli airstrike that struck an aid convoy travelling through Gaza. Uh, it's on the front pages of all your papers this morning. I'm asking how this incident changes your view on Britain's support for. Israel. Um, a lot of uh, incoming with various conversations that we've had this morning. Uh, Simon isn't very happy. Disgusting, James, the way you're speaking to Abdullah or whatever his name is, but good to have both opinions. Israel would not help if the UK were being bombed. I, I, would, I would disagree with that. Ukraine would not help uh, the UK if we were being bombed. Again, Simon, I disagree with that, but I appreciate you getting in touch, but thank you for that. Uh, Mrs. Dong, I can't remember if I read this or not. James, I hope you're getting enough rest between all the shows you're on. You look very smart again yesterday on prime time. Well, thank you. Uh, this one says, you make me sick. Israel have gone far beyond any uh, reasonable retaliation. Uh, they are commuting far worse 
uh, war crimes, I think you mean committing. Uh, however, this one says, James, well-executed response to so-called Abdullah, and I, for one, think we should fully support Israel, and if our support starts to diminish, we should be ashamed of ourselves, says Kate in Barnsley. Thank you for that. Um, this one says, uh, this is from Joe, says, James, love your chat with Abdullah, in quote marks, you were great. Thank you. What people don't understand is this war could have ended in one second if Hamas released the hostages and put down their weapons. Why is the world shouting for a ceasefire and not the release of hostages? Joe, good point. Thank you. Um, Simon's in Cheshire. Simon, good morning. Good morning, James. Good morning, Simon. So, how does the yeah. incident which has taken place in Gaza change your view on Britain's support yeah. for Israel? Well, on a lighter note, just before we go on to that, I'm the uh, Simon in Cheshire that still wants to be the pound chasing your back. Oh. But, um, we spoke before. <laughs> but uh, So, um, hang on. So, when you so, say disgusting, James, does it mean that my views are disgusting or that something else has disgusted you? No, disgusting. Oh, well, then why did you write disgusting? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't write that. No, I, I, we, we spoke. Oh, we autocorrect. You see, so you see, this is what happens. We could have had a world war, Simon, on the basis that you just, <laughs> you know, I just read disgusting and you meant disgusting. No. No, thank God we haven't got a red button. No, right, well no, then there you no, go. But well, it shows I, I, that I read I, out I, the I messages as they, I read out the messages as they come yeah. in. Right, explain your point, Simon. Right, my point is is that um, I don't know the full um, ins and outs at the moment with the three Brits mm. that have been uh, killed. No. Um, and there are a I lot believe. of theories, by the way, which are being spread on social media without the backing. But what we do know um, is that Israel has admitted that this is a tragic error. And I think that is a starting point, because if you have a fighting force that commit something which is uh, an atrocity in, in many respects. We all look at it with horror. We have huge um, condolences and sympathy for those caught up in this. If, however, a fighting force admits that they've made a mistake, that is the first uh, step in, in ensuring that it never happens again. Well, it is, but the Americans are very good at blue on blue. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ex-military, uh, and apparently there was an SBS guy. I don't know. I haven't read the papers yet. I don't know um, the, the information so far. And, and when you say blue on blue, what you, what you mean, just to for, for those who don't necessarily understand, what you mean is that that is oh, killed sorry, by, sorry, quote, that means friendly, friendly fire. On friendly, that, that means killing friendly on friendly. Yes. Um, so apparently there was a, a special forces guy in the in that three man, I don't uh, in, in in the truck or whatever it mm. was to deliver an aid. I don't know because I haven't read the papers so far. Um, but the Israelis are very trigger happy, as the Americans have been in the past. Now, uh, ju but just go just going one in. Back a little bit. But hang on a second, I, I you say the Israelis are trigger happy. I mean, surely it takes both sides that you have a look at what uh, Hamas have been doing over the years. They, they similarly uh, are trigger happy to the extent that they are more indiscriminate, perhaps because they don't have uh, quite the level of munitions that uh, Israel has. But uh, we're dealing with two well, sides would it, would it, would, who are would, 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 very would, would, accomplished would, fighters. Well, you may say that, James. I, I'm, I'm not... Um, so, like, um, I'm not sticking up for either side. I'm, I'm just trying to... I'm not being on the fence because I don't like doing that. But, you know, you can... You know, the Israelis, um, you know, bulldozing, um, you know... The, the, the Palestinian... Uh, I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't I think, look, there are a range of aspects of Israeli policy that, for example, settlement in areas that are outside of the uh, borders, very pro provocative, yeah. um, uh, not that. willing to negotiate on a two-state solution, again, very provocative, all these things. And I'm certainly not in full support of what Israel says and does by any stretch of the imagination. However, Israel as a nation deserves our support. And, and all I go back to is what happened on October the 7th um, was there to destabilise the region because of the deal that was about to be done between Israel and Saudi Arabia to try and normalise relations between countries that hadn't until that point had uh, proper uh, diplomatic relations as, as they were going to. And there are some, particularly Hamas and other organisations, who did not want to see that happen. 
Yeah, but, well, we all know the top hierarchy of Hamas are, you know, multi-billionaires in Qatar or somewhere in the UAE. And uh, but what what I what I'm worried about uh, at the moment is that um, Netanyahu is 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 not really listening to what the US is saying. I don't I don't think he is. I agree with you. I think he's I think he's on a on a particular I, 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 mission, and it's it's hardline. The question I, I is, what level of support no, should no, our nation well, provide? Um, well, support. Well, we we are supporting them uh, with with um, you know missiles and so on. But what you've got to understand as well is that the Arab side of the Arab world will not look. You know that you know the the, the Palestinians have such a small territory now because it's been eroded over time. Well, it's been eroded over time, so but then also there is little, if any, support for the Palestinians from, indeed, many of those Arab nations. Simon, only moving on, just so that I can get one more call in. Uh, you've had a couple of bites of the cherry, I would say. Darren is in uh, Kempston. Darren, good morning. Hello. Hi, Darren. So, uh, tell me, how does this incident change your view on Britain's support for Israel? Well, it doesn't really change my view, I think... The only way to solve this is by recognizing Hamas as a terrorist group. So why do you think that, that there are why do you think there are some people who refuse to identify Hamas as a terror group? Because they they I think they they're a bit sensitive towards the idea of innocent people dying, which is not which uh, isn't great, but. It's a cost of war. Yeah, it is. And and so if it's a cost of war, then, um, you know, how does Israel get people on their side? Well, it's kind of hard because, obviously, like, Israel's, Israel's like the big bad bully, it looks like. Palestine's a small, a very small country. Israel. Well, the thing is that Palestine as a country doesn't exist, and that's part of the problem, isn't it? Yeah, true. I mean, but, so so for example, you have the Palestinian people uh, who who obviously do exist, but the the lack of an ability of the international community to provide a, a nation which people can support has has ultimately caused uh, this problem. Darren, uh, have to leave it there just for time reasons, but I think you've uh, put another side to it, so thank you for that. Uh, just time to tell you about a chance to tour uh, a Scottish retreat. If you've got 150 quid, where could you go for tea? Mm. Let's all go to Balmoral. Tourists have been given the opportunity to explore the former Queen, Queen's favourite palace in Britain for the first time with an afternoon tea thrown in. It's £150 a pop. Ticket holders will get to see the royal rooms where Elizabeth spent her last days at Balmoral uh, Castle, completed in the Scottish Highlands in 1855 when they throw open their doors. So there's that excitement. And then the other excitement that I can just let you know is blimey. Taylor Swift is now a billionaire. It's unbelievable. They've listed the, uh, the top uh, ten people in the UK, Bernard Arnault and his family, the f with fashion and retail, LVMH, etc. Gosh, uh, 233 billion quid. There's a, there's a number to think on. Uh, anyway, thank you very much indeed for your calls, your texts, your emails, all that sort of business. I will be back tomorrow from five for some more early breakfast, and I very much hope you will join me then. Meanwhile, next, it's Talk Today with Dr David Ball and Nicola Thorpe. How are you going to stop the votes? This is an international problem. How's that going for your party? I'm a millennial. You're a Victorian, I think. <laughs> this helps weather people. I'm going to help the vet's office. <laughs> I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, oi, treat girl.
when JK Rowling says, let's just be honest. That's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid 